With the recent Black Friday sales, we saw AMD's Ryzen 7000 series get a significant price drop. Many people, including myself, thought it was temporary, but they might be permanent, and along with that, AMD could be expanding their 3D vCache technology to 16 core desktop parts. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. We've got some exciting stuff happening in the CPU market right now, and thank god because if you were to ask me, it was getting quite boring. The first topic I wanted to go over were some leaks pertaining to some upcoming Ryzen 7000 X3D models. Both of the topics I actually wanted to discuss for this video are follow-ups of sort to some subjects discussed in a previous video, so I always like to make follow-up videos just so you guys are in the loop as to what's going on, and so I can give you guys my thoughts on it. The first bit of news comes from Harukaze, who is sourcing a popular Korean tech site called Quasar Zone. Quasar Zone? I'm probably mispronouncing that. But they stated that AMD is planning on allegedly releasing three Ryzen 7000 X3D models. These models will consist of a 16 core model, a 12 core model, and an 8 core model. This is quite the contrast from the rumor which was discussed in my last video, but that report did come from a different tech outlet in China. ECSM stated that there would only be a 6 core and 8 core model with 3D vCache tech, and I was more inclined to believe that because previously AMD did state that they saw no benefit of releasing 3D cache CPUs that had dual CCDs because they didn't see any extra benefit for them, and gaming for a cores is ample. There really aren't that many games out right now that would scale past 8 cores. Plus, most gamers wouldn't need those extra cores unless they want to dive into workstation tasks or streaming where the extra cores can be put to use. In any case, releasing 3D cache CPUs with dual CCDs, so those being your 12 core and 16 core models, would make things pretty interesting. Remember, a single L3 cache die has 64 megabytes, and in total the 7950X and 7900X have have 64 megabytes of cache as each CCD has 32 megabytes of cache. If each CCD gets an L3 cache die that's vertically stacked, then we're looking at a whopping 192 megabytes of L3 cache in total. That is double of what the 5800X 3D offered. If that extra pool of cache will make a difference, still remains to be seen. Furthermore, Harukaze also mentioned that unlike Zen 3 3D, so the 5800X 3D, the clock speeds of these Zen 4 3D parts will remain the same or at least remain very close to the non 3D parts. That would be a very considerable selling point for these 7000 X3D parts if AMD can manage to keep the clock speeds or at least a single core boost relatively close. This would mean that in those games or situation where the extra cache is not being taken advantage of, you wouldn't experience any sort of performance loss. The reason why this was a concern for the 5800X3D is because that part only had a boost of around 4.5 GHz, whereas the vanilla 5800X had a stock boost of 4.7 GHz, but out of the box, most 5800Xs will boost to around 4.85 GHz, and with a few tweaks in the BIOS using PBO2, you can fairly easily reach 5 GHz on the 5800X. Oh yeah, also official PBO2 and Curve Optimizer wasn't available on the 5800X3D, not that it really needed it, but in those scenarios where the the extra 3D cache wasn't being taken advantage of, I think CSGO is a great example of that, you would see a performance loss from the 5800X 3D. Harukaze hasn't mentioned anything if overclocking will be available for the 7000X 3D chips. If it isn't, then it's not that big of a deal. The clock speeds are already so high that you stop scaling before they even hit that max threshold. And most users I'm finding are running eco modes or with modified PPT values in the BIOS to keep temps in check. And I've gone over this before that even running a 7950X at like 105 watt mode results in no performance loss when it comes to gaming. So if clock speeds are the same, that's awesome. But hey, if they're not, and we're looking at a 2 to 300 megahertz reduction and no overclocking support, it's not really the end of the world when you don't even need it. As for a release date, they mentioned that they will probably be announced at CES 2023, which is planned on being held from January 5th to the 8th, and will hit store shelves later that month on the 23rd. So that's actually not even that far away if you think about it. Harukaze also mentioned that there was no mention of a 6-core 3D model. Not sure if it's because margins on something like that would be too thin, and they want the entry point to be at like $400, or if there's some technical reasoning behind it. 
I figure if these rumors are true, then their logic is that they're already giving three options as it is, and they want to reserve 3D cash for the premium models. Now, one of the other things that Quasar Zone shared was that they also took some numbers from a CPU review that included the U7 RTX 4090, and essentially what they did was they took the performance improvement that the 5800X 3D offered over the 5800X and applied that increase to a 7950X to get a performance estimate of where a 7950X 3D would land. The graph was in Korean, but using the power of Google Lens, we're able to translate the heading to get more info. They showed a graph which averaged 5 modern titles, and estimated that the 7950X 3D would be about 25% faster than a vanilla 7950X, which isn't too bad. If that is what it turns out to be for all the 3D variant SKUs, then I think they'll have some very compelling products on their hands. But take this chart with a grain of salt, this is just you know, rough napkin math, and applying a performance increase from a different architecture to another, you know, who knows how accurate that is. We're just gonna have to wait for official numbers from AMD to get a clear picture. Now, what will make or break these products is pricing. And I'll use that as sort of a segue into my next topic. We'll circle back to the 7000 3D SKUs in just a moment, but I wanted to also follow up on something else from my previous video, which was the discussion of the non-X 7000 models. Those models were reported by a Twitter user by the name of Chill Dog, and they talked about three non-X Ryzen 7000 models that were significantly cheaper than the X variants when comparing MSRP. I originally thought that perhaps AMD would release these cheaper variants instead of dropping prices on the original 7000 models like the 7950X and 79. 900X because those CPUs were only out for like three months and for them to get a price drop already it's not really a good look so I assume that they would launch the cheaper non-X models to appease users looking for cheaper parts however if you shopped online or at your local computer parts retailer over the past week you might have seen a 7600X or 7700X selling for well below MSRP even a higher end model like the 7950X. Many people thought that these were probably just reduced for Black Friday to stir up some interest for the 7000 series. Remember, Ryzen 7000 isn't really selling all that well due to various factors I've discussed before like competition from Intel and expensive motherboard pricing. However, if you were to go over to AMD's official store right now, you'll actually find the 7000 series are still selling at those reduced prices. One could argue that maybe they're still low because they know people are still shopping for the holiday holidays, but I think AMD has quietly cut prices for the 7000 series permanently. Honestly, if you were to ask me, these are the price points AMD should have launched the 7000 series to begin with. One of the things I talked about was how Rapture Lake would offer the user way better multi-core performance than the AMD counterpart. In terms of multi-threading, a 13700K would offer performance close to a 7900X even though its direct competitor was the 7700X, but that was only an 8-core part. Right now on Newegg, you will find a 13700K for about 440 US dollars, and over at AMD's website, the 7900X is retailing for 440 US dollars. I don't think that was a coincidence. With these lower prices, this will help make the expensive motherboard and DDR5 pill easier to swallow. Nonetheless, I wanted to follow up with you guys on the pricing. Th I thought I'd wait a bit to see if it was maybe a Black Friday thing, but I'm glad to see the price cuts from AMD. Like a 7950X is about 550 US dollars. That is an impeccable deal if you want a good gaming CPU and a productivity monster, then that's the one to get. Circling back to the 3D Vcash 7000 models. What I think will happen is that AMD will slot in those parts at the same price points as the 7000 series originally launched at, and they might take the time to make those price cuts official. I was thinking about this earlier, and even if the 7000 X3D CPUs are like 25% faster than the non-3D models, they can't really make them that expensive because, as I had mentioned, there are still large platform costs associated that people are not too thrilled about. Even if they were $50 more expensive than the original MSRPs of the non 3D models, I don't think they'd gain a lot of attraction there. However, launching them at the same price point, I can see a lot of people being happy with that and reviewers praising them for it. I wouldn't really have a problem with it either. This allows AMD to saturate the market with loads of SKUs that will satisfy all sorts of users with various needs. If you want lots of multi-threading performance and you don't really care too much for the best gaming performance but you still want something decent, you can go for a 7950X for 550 US dollars. Or if you're prioritizing faster gaming performance but still want decent multi-threading performance, then a 7900X 3D should be your go-to option. 
This strategy is kind of like what NVIDIA does in the GPU market, where you'll have TI models, models with different uh, VRAM configurations, super models, and it just kind of starts to dwarf the competitor. Also, the other thing I wanted to mention to you guys was that when it comes to X3D models, you don't have to worry about paying a premium for some fast DDR5 6000 plus mega transfers RAM. The 5800X3D showed us that it barely cares about faster RAM, so users could have saved quite a bit of money and paired it with uh, slower RAM. Right now, you can find cheap DDR5 memory that's about the same price as what DDR5 goes for. Probably not the best choice for a 7000 series CPU or Raptor Lake or Alder Lake, but for the 7000X3D CPUs, where they already have a large pool of cash and don't care about latency, then it doesn't even matter. So you can actually save some money if you go with the X3D models. You know, I wasn't really that excited with the CPU market as of late. Everything on the market just kind of performed around the same ballpark. Now, when AMD releases the 7000 3D models, I think this will spark a lot of interest in the market again, because now you'll have some CPUs with blazing fast gaming performance, and with official price cuts, this makes it so that the market opens up to a wide variety of users in various segments. But that will do it for this one, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.